at the Houston Museum of Natural Science because their blog, Beyond the Bones, got chosen as the boss blog of the month. So we're going to go in, play, and talk to Erin. All right, I am standing here with Erin Pliss, and I forgot to right? You did? Okay, good. And um, I am actually talking to Erin because she works at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and she was the one that suggested they started Beyond the Bones. So she is the lady of the hour. So tell me how it all got started. Well, um, I uh, started out here working in the public relations department, and it was uh, the luckiest thing ever to get a job here right out of college. And the coolest thing about my job was seeing behind the scenes. So, you know, I got to go when they were getting new bugs from Africa and, like, you know, showing the bug coming out and putting it on display. I got to see that. I got to see, you know, all the live animals we have here in the schools. I got to see the paleontologists working on the bones, you know, but that was just me, you know. And so it was something where I realized that all of our people who work here, all of the curators who work here have really cool stories to tell. They have very cool things that they do every day, and they aren't necessarily on display. So this was a really great way to get their story out there and to get um, some of these cool experiences that I was getting to have and share those with everybody who comes to the museum, everybody who, anybody in the world who wants to check it out. We have some of our posts are read all around the world and we have just all these crazy comments and stories of people who are trying to raise insects in Kenya, you know what I mean, and want um, advice from our entomologists and things like that. So. Anybody's feelings, but for you, what was the best story or contribute contributor article? Um, I think probably the, my favorite personally um, blogs to read are from our entomologist Erin Mills, uh -huh. um, and she speaks with such an incredible enthusiasm about what she does every day, which is basically take care of our live insects. We have katydids, we have Madagascar hitching, hissing cockroaches, yeah. <laughs> which are what you used, used to see on Fear Factor that they would make them, you know, kind of like let them crawl all over. Yeah. Um, so we have those, and we have beetles from all over the world, these huge giant beetles. So she takes care of those every day. And she's an amazing photographer. So her posts are really cool because she'll take pictures of the insects she's raising and say, like, you know, if you want to raise a candy at home, this is how you can do it, you know. And, and she gets an amazing amount of interaction on her posts as well because people just find that it's so fascinating. That's great. Right. Where's that from? Let's see. That's a good question. Put you on the spot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Star shell. Yeah. Oh, wait. Here we go. Twenty-six. Oh, star shell. It is from the Philippines. That's a yeah. spider. Spider conch. <laughs> spider conch. That is. And these are fake. Oh no, these are. Some of them are models. Yeah. Oh, this is. Um, and yeah, these are different kinds of shells. Different kinds of ways to live in there. Um, and then when they die, their shell just washes up and somewhere and somebody finds it. Definitely one of the finest gold specimens in the world. It's incredibly famous. People come from all over the world to see this. Um, and it's called the dragon because it looks like a dragon. Uh, that'd be a nice dinner centerpiece, huh? It would, yeah. <laughs> and what I like most about it is that um, most people think of gold in nuggets, you know, like the gold rush, people right. picking things out of um, the riverbed. But um, gold for forms in a crystal form like you see here. Um, what, it's just so soft that when it falls out of the rock, the sharp edges get tumbled out as it's going in the riverbed. So um, it's incredibly beautiful. It's natural artwork that's just beyond compare. Wow. You know, you told me how the blog got started. Um, what are some fun things you're doing right now with the blog and at the museum? Well, what I'm really enjoying right now actually is doing a lot of um, holiday stuff. You know, getting our different uh, bloggers to think about holidays and how they relate to science. You know, we did a, a post on museum monsters for Halloween. Oh, fun. Yeah. Where we have our plesiosaur downstairs that's kind of like what people think the Loch Ness Monster might be based on. You know, like where vampirism comes from, that kind of that kind of stuff um, is a lot of fun to do. Where you, you take things that people are really familiar with and do a holiday twist on it. Mm -hmm. um, coming up, we do something for the holiday season called the 12 Days of HMNS, which is a video series. 12 different videos of things that are coming up at the museum, things you can enjoy with your family over the holidays, and we have a website that's devoted to that. Okay. And then the people who are involved in those videos will do a blog post about their experience of creating the video, and so you get kind of the video itself, and then you get the behind the scenes of how we did it, you know, yeah. so 
we're doing things like um, we're opening an exhibit on Fabergé coming up here actually um, in a few days. Okay. And um, our curator of mineralogy, who's also our president, uncreated this unbelievably stunning tiara. Um, from the Fabergé exhibit, yeah, it's, it Can I was be unreal. Can for a day, please? <laughs> they didn't let me try it on, I asked. Oh. Um, but no, um, unfortunately not. But, you know, he was uncreating it and talking about, you know, Carl Fabergé, this amazing master jeweler from Russia, and how he never created tiaras, really. Mm -hmm. And the diamonds themselves were actually a gift from Tsar Alexander I to the Empress Josephine, who had been married to Napoleon. Wow. And it was a gift on her divorce, actually, from Napoleon. And then her family later had these jewels created into this tiara, which we're standing here looking at. It's in the original box that Fabergé, one of the most famous jewelers of all time, put it in, gave it to the Tsar, gave it to an empress. I mean, it's, it's this incredible sense of history, and you're staring at it going, wow. So it's that kind of experience that we're trying to bring to people on blog. We're trying to bring through video and, and behind the scenes, stuff like that. So. Wait, let me get this right. She got diamonds for a divorce gift? Yes. Not from Napoleon. She oh. got them from Alexander. And they are spectacular, oh. like nine carat. Um, the centerpiece is a nine carat briolette cut stone. It's that amazing. would increase divorce rate in America. <laughs> sure. If everybody got diamonds? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, can we take a look at that? Or? No. Yeah. To edit that one out. <laughs> it's not going to take a look at the tiara. It's actually, it's being installed right now. So okay. you'll be able to take a look at it in the exhibition, but unfortunately I can't okay. bring you guys to it right now. All right, I keep actually looking beyond you because I see this huge dinosaur yes. fossil. And I need to find out what that is for sure. Okay. It's <laughs> Okay, let's go do that. All right. All right I was recently uh, reading on the blog about the 100 year and 100 objects. And we're actually standing in front of one of these objects. And if you can just explain a little bit about what you're doing, what, what is that all about, actually? Well, the 100 Years 100 Objects is a series on the blog that was designed to celebrate our centennial. And the museum was founded in 1909, so this year, 2009, is our 100th anniversary in Houston. Which Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, and being the person that actually looked up all the history, I can tell you there's quite a bit of it. <laughs> um, we haven't only been on this particular site for 30 or so years. Um, we've been kind of all over Houston, and we have a whole website devoted to it, 100.hms.org. People can see a timeline of our history in Houston. Uh, but we also had our curators select 100 of the most important, interesting, um, stunning artifacts that we have, either on display here in the museum or in the museum's collections, because most people don't realize this, but only about 8% of what the museum preserves and, and collects um, for future generations is actually on display. Wow. So um, we're standing in front of one of them. This is the um, Diplodocus Hai. It is a <laughs> it's a type specimen for this um, for this species. It's the only one of these that's on display in the world. Um, and it went on display in either 1970 or 1971. It was the first dinosaur we had. Um, and it's really spectacular. It's um, also got an interesting history because um, the way that dinosaurs are displayed has changed over the years. Oh. So you can kind of see that um, in it as well. Um, we originally mounted it, the tail was actually on the ground. Um, and uh, which reflected the current, you know, in the 1970s, the conception of how the dinosaur would have looked. Right. Now we know their tail acted as a balance mechanism with their head, and so it would have been up. That's very interesting. So, yeah, that's one of the objects you can read about on the blog, and we've still got about 30 or so left that we're revealing as the rest of the year plays out. T-Rex is modeled that he's about to eat you. Yeah. <laughs> that's Get right. that guy? <laughs> The T-Rex is actually um, one of my favorite. It's not one of our 100 objects, but it is one of my favorites because uh -huh. um, when kids walk through here, they, they that's the, one of the first things they see. And so you'll you'll walk through the exhibit halls, and there'll be um, six-year-old kids that walk right under the T-Rex jaws, and they just look up, and they're like, oh, God. You know, and you have this, like, light go on, like, oh, my God. Um, what is that, that? That's where you found me, actually, <laughs> <laughs> prior to this interview. <laughs> That's right. It's quite stunning. And you stand under it and you're looking at it going, wow, I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park. Yeah. So. Well, um, I guess the last thing I want to know is what what's the future for the blog? It's absolutely amazing. And 
um, the Houston community, I think, has really um, taken it in as their own and really, you know, formed a community within it. So I just want to know um, what future plans do you have for it, or where do you even want to see, you know, where do you want to see it go? Well, I think, um, you know, we want to see it integrate even more with the rest of our social media outreach. We want to see it integrate even more with our website. Um, and most of all, I think the best ideas we get um, are from the people who read the blog. We're right. constantly getting questions um, as comments that end up being whole other posts, you know. Um, right. We've had that happen several times on our energy blog, on our paleontology blog. People are just interested in something and it ends up being something that the curator has so much to say about that it's a whole new post, okay. you know. And so I really, I, I love getting that sort of community feedback. I feel like every time we get a comment, that's a, a huge success for the blog. Um, and we want it to go where the readers would like to see it go. So um, hopefully it'll be even more interesting. We'll go behind the scenes. We'll do videos. We'll do whatever we can to kind of give people the museum experience online um, and, you know, just keep listening to what they want to, what they want to see. Yeah. All right. That's great. <laughs> I have a question that I've been dying to know. What is your favorite dinosaur? Well, I have to say it's hard to pick one, but um, my favorite is actually the one right here. It's called a Dimetrodon, and it's not a dinosaur. It's actually the biggest land predator before the dinosaurs came. It's about 300 million years old. Um, and the reason he's my favorite is because I met my husband on a dinosaur dig where we were digging fossils of a dimensional. So, nice. um, yeah, I have a soft spot in my heart for the dimensional. <laughs> so ladies, if you want to meet your husband, go on a dinosaur dig. Duly noted. <laughs> Alright, well, um, Aaron, it has been such a fun day. And is there anything else that you want the visitors, or the viewers and the visitors to know about the blog? or? that we have here are just phenomenal and I know that you know checking out the blog you're definitely going to find something that interests you whether it's you know Native American cultures or minerals from you know deep within the earth or living frogs or I mean there's just so many topics that they cover and so we hope that people will check it out you know see something that's interesting to them or ask us a question you know we're always we identify bugs we answer questions we do all kinds of stuff and so our goal is just to get science into people's everyday lives and you know, we're just very would love to hear from people so we definitely love you at Shibble, and if I found a bug in my bathroom and I needed identification ASAP, what is the URL I can go to? You can go to blog.hmns.org. Write it down, folks. Thank you to Erin and the Houston Museum of Natural Science for having us out here today um, to see what the Beyond the Bones blog is all about and see what they're actually doing here at the museum. And you can check out more of the Boss blog at blog.shipple.com. Come see us!